Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. You amazing, amazing, beautiful, wonderful people. Now, this is video 1A of free, four, I don't know anymore. But yeah, this is 1A. Later on, there's going to be a video that says that's one, and this is actually one. And there's a... We'll just get on with it. Because the University of Idaho has been at it again. Let's get straight into it. You're going to love it. By the way, you're looking absolutely amazing today. Let's get on with it. University of Idaho, Moscow police under scrutiny over alleged assault by football players. Now, later on in this video, we're actually going to go over the, the doc, the, the report. And yeah. Interesting, to say the least. Um, the attorney for Timmy Reed has and his family is calling on the University of Idaho to hold the football players accountable for their alleged acts of violence. Not going to play the video. Moscow, Idaho. The attorney representing a man whose son was allegedly knocked unconscious by a group of University of Idaho football players is demanding answers from the university. Tim Gresback. The attorney for Nick Reed and his son, Timmy Reed, released a lengthy statement about the early February incident where Timmy was allegedly sucker punched and knocked unconscious after asking a group of Vandal football players to leave his home. In the statement, Gresbach said the university and the Moscow Police Department haven't done enough to get to the bottom of the incident and demanded to get some kind of answers as soon as possible. Yet again, Moscow Police Department not seemingly wanting to challenge the University of Idaho and bring them f to accountability. Hmm. The reason, we, uh, the reason we are here today is because Timmy and his parents want no other vandals to go through what they have gone through gresbach wrote in a statement not only does timmy want to feel safe he also respectfully demands individual institutional and community accountability which is fair according to gresbach a large group of people some who are believed to be university of idaho football players showed up at timmy reed's house on the night of february the 10th 2024 he was reportedly having a party at the home that night with some other members of his fraternity be a theta pi um, timmy reed claimed the group had as many as 50 people and said some of them were wearing face masks and carrying PVC pipes. Gresbach said it's not clear why the crowd showed up, but Timmy Reed asked the group to leave his house. At that point, someone in the crowd allegedly sucker punched him in the face, causing him to fall and hit his head on the ground and become unconscious. He suffered from a concussion, black eye, and a fractured nose, according to Gresbach. And we've got some photographs here of the um the injuries it's blurring some of them out oh there we go so quite nasty injuries there the reed family wonders as do i how the vandal community can allow a culture like this to exist gresbach said the football player identified as the perpetrator should not be the sole party held accountable um, held to account um, in a way he too is a victim of a toxic out of control cavalier vandal football culture that tolerates violence but lacks leadership in a statement gresbach called on the university president scott green to hold the alleged offenders accountable we respectfully demand that the university respond substantively by friday may 3rd so students can enter final week knowing that President Green cares about their safety. Gresbach full statement can be read below. And we shall um, read this, right? So my name is Tim Gresbach. I'm an attorney in Moscow, Idaho. On my right is Timmy Reed. On my left is his father, Nick Reed. Nick is a fourth-generation Idaho vandal. Timmy is a fifth-generation vandal. Timmy is a senior at the University of Idaho and a member of the fraternity Beta Theta Pi 
Um, he is majoring in civil engineering and has a 3.56 GPA. During his time at the university, Timmy has attended and enthusiastically cheered on the Vandal football team at almost every home football game. Timmy pa- Timmy's parents, Nick and Melissa Reed of Wiser, Idaho, have raised thousands of dollars over the years for Vandal football scholarships. Timmy was the victim of a violent crime on Saturday, February the 10th, 2024, at his home in Moscow, Idaho, near the university campus. Timmy and his two housemates from Beta Theta Pi were hoping to host a social event at his triplex that Saturday evening, but it hadn't really started when a large crowd, estimated at 40 or 50 or more, suddenly arrived uninvited and unannounced around 10.30pm. The crowd appeared to be University of Idaho students, some of who wore face masks and carried PVC pipes. It is believed that many in the group were University of Idaho football players. It is not altogether clear what induced this large crowd to suddenly show up. It may have been for some twisted notion of revenge. A week week earlier, at a different location, a member of Timmy's fraternity had a tussle with a football player. Timmy, however, had nothing to do with any precipitating event. Timmy um, is an innocent victim. Timmy asked the group to leave his residence. He had never in his life been in a fight. He brandished no weapon. One person in the crowd, without provocation, sucker punched him in the face. Timmy was also hit in the head. He fell to the ground and hit his head on the asphalt. Timmy was knocked knocked unconscious. He suffered a concussion, fractured nose, black eye. He needed and received medical attention at quick care. These photos depict what Timmy looked like after he was sucker punched. And it's got the photographs again here. The reason we are here today is because Timmy and his parents want no other vandals to go through what they have gone through. Not only does Timmy want to feel safe, he also respectfully demands individual, institutional and con- community accountability. This young man was also addled with fear after he was assaulted that he slept with a knife under his pillow. Timmy has fully cooperated with the university's investigation and has voluntarily appeared for a police interview. He has nothing to hide. The Reed family does not want this crime to be swept under the rug, but I almost feel like I can hair the broom. The end of the semester is nearly on us. Witnesses will soon be scattered upon um, summer break and graduation. If there is a strategy to run accountability clock out, it could very well be working. It seems to me that for such a large crowd to show up at the same time at a private home without invitation, it took organized communication and planning. My guess is that these are digital footprints or there are digital footprints of this effort. The evidence should be preserved and I hope that the police and university officials have taken measures to do so. I urge any witnesses to the February the 10th, 2024 incident who have not yet spoken to law enforcement to come forward. The Reed family wonders, as do I, how the Vandal community can allow a culture like this to exist. Where was the team leadership? Where were the football captains? Who was, who, what do the assistant coaches teach? What does head football coach Jason Eck tolerate? What is the athletic director, Terry Gorlick? doing to assure the community that this won't happen again? What is Dean of Students Blaine Eccles doing to protect students from this kind of behaviour? Will President Green tolerate this type of football player violence as long as the football team has a winning record? Through the grapevine, we have heard that some are trying to justify the violence because racial insults were allegedly hurled that night. This, however, is an unfair attempt to change the narrative. First and foremost, the Reed family does not talk that way. Racial epithets are unacceptable. Timmy was not raised to use that kind of language. In addition, this inaccurate narrative shift does not address why this large, seemingly organized and intimidating mob group showed up on Timmy's doorstep uninvited. The allegation that racial slurs were thrown after the crowd's arrival doesn't explain the impetus for their arrival in the first place. This group arrived in a concerted fashion looking for trouble. They certainly succeeded. They made trouble. This time, luckily, no one was killed. This time, luckily, no one lost their eyesight. What about next time? Unless there is individual 
and institutional accountability coupled with a new infusion, a new type of football and athletic leadership, we fear it is only a matter of time before this type of rogue behaviour happens again. The while the white football player identified as the perpetrator should not be the sole party held to account. In a way, he is to a victim of a toxic, out of control, cavalier vandal football culture that tolerates violence but lacks leadership. It's time for change. I understand. I imagine you may have questions, but we respectfully suggest you direct them to the University of Moscow Police Department. In the past, President Scott Green had a track record of being bold, decisive, and fearless. However, in this case, the accountability clock is running out. Our vandals deserve better leadership. The change must come from the top. We respectfully demand the university respond substantively by Friday, May the 3rd, one week from today, so students can enter finals week knowing that President Green cares about their safety. The Moscow Police Department said the investigation into the incident is ongoing and the department is hopeful the investigation will wrap up shortly. Just goes on. But look, there you have it. What did you get from that? Violence, football players, large groups who are coordinated going to a home and attacking people. They're seemingly not being done anything in the background of it. Oh, and students having to resort to sleeping with knives for protection. Let me know down below what you think, and I shall catch all of you in the next one.